going on guys? I got something fun and cool to share with you, or at least I think so. Uh, this, of course, is the Chris Reeve Omnumzon. This is a new one. Uh, it was released in July of this year, according to its little uh, Certificate of Authenticity card. It comes in a very nice box, as most Chris Reeves do. Um, comes with a lot of stuff, too. Now, I got this used. I got it in trade. Comes with the traditional Chris Reeve cleaning cloth, which is very cool. It's got their, got their logo on it right there. Kind of hard to see, but there it is. Comes with tools for working on the knife, which is a nice touch. These are Allen wrenches, which is a Chris Reeve standard. Comes with some lube. And it also comes with, this is the Loctite actually. Uh, the lube is, oh, it's in on my desk somewhere. Comes with a little booklet of information, uh, including something that I think is very, very cool. Um, it comes with a full exploded view breakdown, which I really, really like. Um, this thing runs on phosphor bronze washers, uh, which is awesome. This is just very cool. And it better come with all this stuff because these things are, you know, over $400, which is a lot of money. But this one is mine, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. So I traded for some other goodies that I had laying around. Um, I've had a Sebenza 31. I have the Chris Reeve Nyala, which is a fixed blade. And I had a 21 in for review. And the 21, the Sebenza, and I just... We just didn't get along that well. It's a great knife, uh, but I just didn't find it that comfortable in hand. Whereas a while back when I got a chance to hold one of the Unumzons here, I fell for it immediately. Now, I began looking for the drop point, but those are few and far between and kind of hard to come by. And so when this Tanto popped up, I said, yep, let's do that. Um, Chris Reeve is one of those knife companies where you really got to want one because you're paying for the privilege. That is true. But the Amazon is a particularly excellent pocket knife. It is thick slabs of titanium, right? It's got this marvelous barrel, blah, 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 barrel spacer back here. It does have a lanyard tube. Now, the previous owner put a little bit of Loctite uh, around the tube, and they did that because it can be a rattle, and this one apparently had that. It's got a little bit of jimping right here on the blade. Um, I love the way that the lock bar is a frame lock. Uh, and in traditional Chris Reeve form, it is locked up at about 85%. But the lock bar itself has got this really nice rise to it, so you can get a hold of it really easily. And the action on this one is very good. Now, because it is on phosphor bronze washers, uh, it's not really drop shut, but the snap open is fantastic. Now, let's talk about the blade. This is one of the new ones in S45VN. Traditionally, and for a very long time, Chris Reeves have been in S35VN. Uh, they updated this in 20 or 21 and decided to start making their knives in 45, and so that's what this is. S45VN is good steel. It is a little bit better than S35VN. I only have one other knife in S45, and that is the uh, PM2 here. Uh, this is a first-gen Spyderco PM2 in S45VN, and I have had exceptionally good luck with this steel. This holds an edge very, very well. And since Chris Reeve does, man, I use this thing a lot. So uh, Chris Reeve does, if not as good, perhaps a better job of their heat treat than Spyderco. Uh, I have absolute faith that the S45VN on this blade is going to hold on for a very long time and do every job that I need it to. I love knives like this. I do. Uh, it's interesting looking. It's very comfortable to carry and to use. It's well thought out. Now this is the traditional Chris Reeves sort of pocket clip. I have a deep carry clip coming from MXG clips. We'll see how much I like that. But then again, you guys know I prefer a deep carry. This isn't bad. There's not a lot of knife sticking out. Let's see if we can find something to... Uh, this, this will do. All right, as you can see, not a ton of knife sticking out, but a little. We'll put a deep carry clip on there and see if we can make that even less noticeable in the pocket. Now, why does that matter? Well, for some people, and particularly those of you with a more tactical lean, it doesn't matter. 
you want a lot of tail of the knife hanging out the back to get a hold of, pulling out of the pocket. But I work in a professional setting, and I don't like to have to explain the pocket knife in my pocket. So deep carry is what I prefer. So we'll see how that looks, and when I get that, I'll put it on there, and I'll do a what's in the pocket update with this and share with you how it all went. So let's see, what do you get for your 425 to $450? Well, you get just what, three point, hang on just a second. You get three and three eighths of cutting on uh, three and a half inches of that S45 VN. The grip area is really generous, right? So you get just shy three and seven eighths of grip area, um, which is perfect for me. As you can see, my hand is just right to the lip right here. It's really nicely done. This is a surprisingly good carry. Uh, it is very thin this way when closed. And of course, because it's thumb studs, there is nothing to sort of jab into your stuff on this side. There is what I'm assuming is a bit of a glass breaker built into the knife up here at the top. Now, I've seen people that are able to front flip these, but I can't. And I don't know if it's because this is still, even though this was a user, it's still fairly new. Um, yeah, it's not going to work for me, but I've seen people do it. Uh, the thumb studs work exceptionally well. Uh, the previous owner put the little rubber gaskets on here. I've seen it without as well. Um, and of course, the thumb studs nestle nicely up against the frame here as the stops. I love this knife. <laughs> I really do. Overall length on this thing is a little over eight and a quarter. Uh, eight and... Yeah, eight and three eighths overall. Uh, I really, look, I said it a minute ago, I really like this knife. And I didn't love the Sebenza, and that's okay. The nice thing about knives, and I've said this many, many times, is that they are absolutely personal and subjective. What works for one person doesn't have to work for another. And most companies make enough variety that you don't have to love one of their knives if you want to love a different one. As long as the quality is consistent, the build quality, the manufacturing ideals are good, they'll have something you like. And the Umnums on here is that for me when it comes to Chris Reeve. Let's do some size comparisons up against some of its sort of, well, high-end knife brethren. Here it is against the SNG by Strider. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than a, a little bit longer at least than a uh, SNG which means it is smaller than the SMF. I don't have one of those on the table. And here it is against the XM18. Again, it is just a little bit longer than the XM18. Now Strider, Hinderer, and Chris Reeve, these are sort of well-known knives in the expensive, not custom market. What do I mean by that? Well, there are custom knives that cost, you know, 500 bucks and way, way up. Two, up to you know, three, four, five, however much money you want to spend. I've seen $10,000 custom folders. And then there's your standard sort of production level knives, you know, stuff like the Spider Co., right? PM2 here, come in at about 150 bucks. You can get, nowadays, you can get knives in all of these materials. Well, maybe not S45VN, but S35VN or even LMAX or other Super Steels. Uh, for, you know, 180 to $200. So much like these, the XM18 and the SNG here, you kind of have to want this particular company, this name, uh, for this expenditure to be worth it. And for me, and again, I got this in trade, so I would not have gone out and spent, I couldn't. I don't have that kind of money laying around. But to get one in hand is what kind of tells the story. Now, as I mentioned, it's running on phosphor bronze, so the action is incredibly smooth. That click is great. And, you know, close from here, you can wiggle it shut, but it's not drop shut. Now, I know, because a buddy of mine has got the uh, Sebenza 21 that he has just used and used and used, that eventually this will drop shut. But unlike bearings, it takes a while to get there, and that's okay. 
the closed length on this guy, including the little stabby glass breakery thing right there, is just shy of five inches. It's not a bad carry. It's really not. In fact, it's a better carry because it's thinner than the 18 and it's less pocket bulky than the uh, SNG here. It's a better carry than either one of those. I have another American-made Tanto that I think is really cool. This is the uh, Tour Knives Merchant. Right? Very different in their design aesthetic. But the Umnum Zahn is a better carry than the Merchant because it is thinner. And even though this is not a deep carry, it's much better. The clip is much better than the Merchant. But still, these are both very slicey, very nicely done American-made knives in titanium and good steel. Let's do some other size comparisons just because that's what we do. Well, here, we've already done the PM2, but let's bring it out again. Now, the PM2 is... Yep, just a little bit shorter. The Emblem's on is a big knife. Uh, where is our... There it is. Here it is against the bug out. Another excellent American-made knife, right? Uh, the Zahn is just a particularly large, sort of Chris Reeves kind of tactical folder. I hate that word, but... That's kind of how they talk about it. And here it is against the uh, the Benchmade full-size Presidio 2. And as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than that. All right. I really like the Zahn. <laughs> I really do. Um, am I still going to look for the drop point? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, I really, I've been in sort of a Tanto thing lately, really enjoying them. Again, this, uh, this SNG is a really aggressive Tanto blade, right? Um, but I, I've really been enjoying Tantos, but there's something about the drop point version of this Umnum Zahn that is particularly beautiful. So if one of those was to pop up for trade, I would absolutely jump on it just the same. And yes, I would then have two and that would be fine with me. It's funny, you know, I do this all the time in my reviews. I say, do I recommend this knife? Well, anything past about the three, $350 mark, and I really wrestle with recommending it to my viewers because that is so much money for a knife. But the Omnum Zahn is a little bit like the SNG and some other sort of expensive tools. Uh, it's a little bit, yeah, it's like the... Uh, the Terrain 365, the Teravantium knives that they have, the uh, Invictus and the STS-AT. If you want one of these, kind of nothing else will do. And that's because even though there are a, a myriad of other titanium and S35, S45, LMAT, you know, whatever knives out there, this is a particular style that isn't like really anything else. So if you find yourself drawn to the Zahn, as I have been now for a couple of years, I've been sort of trying to figure out a way to land one. I can tell you that once you get one in hand, you'll know it was the right move. <laughs> now this is hollow ground, and so it is very, very slicey, but because of the way they have done this Tanto, let me see how that's showing up on camera. Yeah, there you go. This is a very, very robust tip, to coin a phrase, from our friend Metal Complex, which means if you needed to give somebody a little direction, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about snapping the tip of this off in use. Now, this does make it a bit of a pain in the ass to sharpen because this is not secondary beveled up here. This is one edge from this line all the way out to the, to the edge of the knife. So having this sharpened is something I'm going to have done professionally, uh, I can use stones, and I've got my rod system. I can sharpen, you know, normal knives, even other Tantos, without it being an issue, because there's a secondary bevel out here that allows you to know that that is the line that you need to sharpen. The Omnum Zahn does not share that feature. It does have a secondary bevel. All right, it does have the bevel down here, which makes sense. But up here at the tip, this is all sharpened. So just something to be aware of if you are a regular user of this knife 
unless you are very confident in your multi-angle sharpening skills, and I am not, you're going to want to have this sharpened by somebody who knows what they're doing. Stuff like this is fun. And it's also just super reliable and useful. Now this one came with some, you know, some trails on the scale, some snail trails, man. This was, uh, again, this was a user knife for somebody, and I'm super okay with that. And you get a really expensive knife that is perfect. There's a draw, at least for me, your experience may be different. There's a draw to keep them perfect, right? Uh, and that means they may not get the use that they deserve. When dealing in used knives, you end up with something that is very, very cool, but you don't have to, it's like getting a car. You hate that first scratch so much, but after that, you're kind of good with it. There's none of that anxiety, none of that stress with a used knife like this. It's just as good as a new knife. Everything about it is equally as sound and equally well done. But if I drop the thing into my pocket and I've got keys in there, I'm not going to freak out. Let's go ahead and weigh it, because that's something we do. I love this coin, by the way. This is number 110 of, I think, 200 that he had made. On this side, never go anywhere without a knife, which is Gibbs rule number nine. Um, and of course, it's got the uh, ZT0302 on the back, which is what Gibbs carried. I love this thing. My buddy Dirk's got one of these or something very similar. I just thought it'd be fun to have it on the table today. All right, let's weigh out the umnums on and see where we land. It isn't light. At least I don't think it is. Let's see. Yeah, we are a dead level five ounces. But you know what? For an over eight inch knife with no milling on the tie, that ain't bad. You're going to know it's in the pocket, and that's okay. You kind of want to know it's in the pocket. Let's take a look at how much S45VN you get. Break out my budget calipers. All right, let's zero that out. Back here at the thickest point, you get 3.5, give or take. So my, my calipers aren't that accurate. So we're going to say 3.5 plus millimeters, which is 156 thousandths of an inch. This is a marvelous tool. If you like Chris Reeve stuff, get one. Nothing else will do. Really, in the end, nothing else will do. The nice thing about Reeve knives is that if you get one and you don't love it, they hold their value. So much like my, you know, my, my uh, Sebenza, beautiful knife, fantastic knife, just wasn't for me. And so I was able to turn around and sell it for exactly what I paid for it. Uh, which is not uncommon with Chris Reeve, as opposed to, you know, many brands. Uh, you drop you know, 200 bucks on a uh, on a Wii knife, 250 bucks on a Wii knife or more, you're not going to get quite that much out of it. But Chris Reeve and Hinderer, uh, well, you know, Hinderer about the same. And then of course with <laughs> Striders, you know, these things are 550 when they drop. If you can find one at a show and you can walk out the door and sell it for seven, which is just absurd, but that's the way it goes. When Chris Reeve started making their all titanium, you know, back then they were S30V and then they moved to S35 knives, there weren't that many competitors. But today, there are lots of competitors. Now, granted, there aren't that many American made competitors, but there are a few. But there are excellent knives in excellent materials for even a couple of hundred dollars less, or in this case, a hundred and something dollars less. So you got to know you really want one. But if you do, if you do, go out and get yourself one. And that's where we're going to end it. This is my new Chris Reeve Umnumzon. This is a fantastic pocket knife. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at it. I've enjoyed sharing it with you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.